Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, episode 45. In today's episode, I wanted to share the talk that I gave at Podcast South Florida. Now, if you didn't know, a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Miami and be welcomed with open arms and hugs and handshakes of friendship at the Podcast South Florida uh, meetup up near Fort Lauderdale, I think it was. And this is a podcast meetup that is is put together just by a group of individuals like me who have a podcast and are passionate about podcasting, sharing a message with the world, connecting with with other like-minded people and sharing their stories. It's just a great way to connect. But Podcast South Florida is put together by my friend Jared Easley, my friend Jared Easley, and my new friend Laura Sanchez, who also is from Florida. When I knew I was headed to Florida, I reached out to Jared. He connected we, me with, with Laura, and I was just overwhelmed by their generosity of allowing me to come and share my message and talk with with fellow podcasters, people like me who are one to, to share a message. So without any further delay, I'm just going to roll the tape of my talk that I gave in front of is about 25 to 30 podcasters. The room was packed out at this really cool Dunkin' Donuts. So uh, if you are a Dunkin' Donuts person, uh, by the way, Shipley's is better, but thank you for letting us. <laughs> Uh, have uh, our, our meetup there and thank you especially to Jared and Laura for inviting me and for everyone else for for listening to what I had to say so we'll go right into the interview stick around at the end I'd love to get your your thoughts in the comments below if you are on um, empoweredpodcast.com slash 45 that's where you'll find these comments let's go right into it But I should be recording now, and almost have my notes. But I know where I wanted to start. I don't need notes for that part. But I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out. Um, it's interesting being part of the podcast community and and coming, you know, a thousand miles away to South Florida and mentioning that to a couple people and. Everybody shows up, or they spread the word, and I get to meet people who I've talked to on Twitter, or on Facebook, possibly LinkedIn, people who I met in Vegas like Alex, or online like John, and I've heard of the Alpha Man Project, so his his fame is spreading, so uh, there's... <laughs> exactly, so there's, there's a lot of great podcasters in the room, and I mean... You've got, I think I saw on your website, over 3 million downloads now. So um, a lot of really awesome people here. So I wanted to start off by, by thanking everybody for coming, allowing someone from a foreign country, like Donald said, um, come and bring the great empowerment of Texas here. Uh, but that, that takes me to my next point. It's just the community of, of podcasting. And I have a, a couple things I wanted to share along the way. Again, I'm no expert, but... I think part of what makes podcasting amazing is that we just share what what we're going through now, what we have just gone through, and you know maybe some of the things that we've got just over the horizon. So, um, just from the podcasting community, I'm I'm in other groups on Facebook and things like that. But what I've noticed is that in some of these other groups, it's always somewhat based on a scarcity mindset. Like, I got this speaking gig and you can't. Or, I don't want to share too much information because, well, there's no really good reason to follow that up. I mean, the people in this room know that the more we share, the better everybody seems to get. So, there's a lot of positive to that. But I just wanted to, to point that out, is that the, the podcasting community, I don't have 100 episodes. I'm in the mid-40s right now. And I've met some really incredible people in the podcasting industry and outside of it. And there really is nothing quite like it. And, and I'll say we, because I'm as much of a part of it as... But we give and we give and we share and we invite people in. We invite people onto our shows. <clears throat> 
And that's that's something that we don't see all that often. I want to just make sure everybody keeps that in mind as we go, you know, leave here. We go to Podcast Movement in August. Who's going to Podcast Movement? Good, good. I'm jealous. Uh, uh, yeah. So... But it's the same thing. It's an idea of, of coming together. And you don't see that a lot with, with some of these other industries and even Facebook groups, even social groups. So, again, our, our community is based on giving generosity and this, this idea of abundance. And it's nice to be welcomed here as almost a native, although it is really hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I come I live in Austin, and it's you know in the almost a hundred, but here with the humidity, yeah, two showers a day minimum for this guy. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm gonna try to walk around some, and don't mind me if I I carry this. But I took some. I had to, I don't usually write a whole lot of things out, um, but I wanted to do a good job. I'm somewhat nervous. Most of you guys I've not met, just a few online, so I wanted to make sure I did a good job. But there's four lessons that I kind of wanted to distill everything down to and just back up a second i've been blogging for just over two and a half years and i started that in 2012 in january got 250 blog posts hundreds of thousands of words but only in in november is when i started my podcast so um my even though my journey is not you know, four or five years, or I started after Alex. I know I started after Jared, but there's basically four lessons that I thought I would want to share. And one thing I've learned about leadership is you don't have to be across the line. You just have to be a couple steps further than someone and just turn around and share a piece of advice. So the first one is really believe in yourself and in your message. Now, it's fairly straightforward, but who here has an okay podcast? <laughs> Who here has an awesome podcast? Yeah, see, but but that's that, I wanted to ask that question in, in those orders because to be successful doing this, whether you're, whether you want to turn this into an online business or you want to, you know, go into coaching or whatever you want to do, you really have to believe in your message and that you're worthy of sharing that message. So often we think, oh, that's a cool idea, but nobody wants to listen to me. Or that's really awesome. That'd be a fantastic podcast or fantastic product. But we don't always believe in ourselves as the person who can deliver that message. And I was telling, we just grabbed a bite to eat at Taco Bell before we came here, and I told my mom and my sister that I was going to tell everyone about my dream. And as corny as it sounds, is she with us? She is. It's Jackie. But as corny as it sounds, I did have a dream about 6 o'clock this morning. I woke up and had to start writing in, in my Evernote. But we're one, me and a friend, I don't know who it was, but we were riding around in this truck and we got lost out in the middle of nowhere. And the, we come to this kind of fork in the road. It's all dark outside and the guy's headlights are on. And he just stops in the middle of the road and he's got his foot on the brake. And we sat there for a couple of minutes. And I just looked at him. And for some reason, I remember thinking in this dream that I knew where we were, I knew the surroundings, and I thought I could get him going. But I turned to him and I looked at him and I said, no one's ever going to tell you to go. And that, that literally woke me up this morning. And I think that's very true when it comes to the message that we have, whether it's through the blog or a podcast or whatever avenue we choose to use it for. No one is going to tell you to start it. No one is going to tell, unless maybe it's in this community, you'll get a lot of support. You know, we were kind of jabbing these guys over here, John, you know, about starting his podcast and things like that. But with most things in life, no one's going to push you out and say, go and start this thing. Go create this cool product, this cool story. No one's going to say go. And so that's, and that, that's what struck me about this dream is no one's going to tell you to go. And I wanted to make sure I shared that with you guys today. And the second thing, so that's belief in yourself and in your message. Hopefully, hopefully that helps everyone. The second part is know your why. And I think that's probably a term that 
many of us, we've probably read at least a handful of overlapping books, listened to a handful of overlapping podcasts, but your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Why do you, you know, turn on the microphone, flip on the... I don't have one, but the thing with the dials, the mixer, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm Go right into the computer, yeah. So, uh, but, and if anyone would like, this is a, a participation part, but who here can clearly state why they are doing their podcast? I want to help people. If I have to put it in one sentence, specifically men, but in general, I want to help people. I want to inspire them to go after what they want in their life. I want to inspire them, or I want them to reflect and know what they want in their life, and I want to inspire them to do that. I want to help people in between the years of 35 and 55 to live their future and not their past. Mm. Perfect. I want people to make more money from their website. Yeah. Heck yeah, Alex. Anyone else? Well, for the three of you guys, is your why today different than your why when you first started? Mine's always been that way. It's just been retooled and somehow been reshaped, but the message, the core, is still there. It's about hope. Yeah, mine's pretty much the same. It's just I found that my audience was a lot different than what I expected it to be when I first started. So Interesting. I'm talking a little bit of a different message than when I thought than I thought I was at the beginning. I know when we met at a platform, you hadn't launched yet, and it did seem like you had a very clear goal, and your why was fairly well defined. I I wasn't that that way. What about you? Would you say yes or no? Yeah, it's it's the same. It's just. Uh, I guess like Alex, I'm just trying to figure out who exactly I'm serving. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to some people, but the why has not changed. Just maybe what I'm going to, how I'm going to do it, that makes sense. But the why is the same. Awesome. Well, for me, like I said, my, my why has, I don't, I don't want to say it, ch- it changed, but I, I would probably say that it, w- it wasn't there in the beginning. And it, I don't know that it was necessarily there two and a half years ago when I started my blog and only through a, a process of daily kind of trying to trying to figure it out the struggle of what am I here for what kind of message do I want to be putting out into the world what, what do I want people to get from me and, and I'll share with you the question that that I kind of asked myself and it came from the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. I think it's habit number two, begin with the end in mind. And the question is, and I really, if you don't know, if you didn't raise your hand because you didn't want to talk or because you don't know yet, if you don't know, that's fine. It took me two and a half years, but (laughs) (laughs) it did. Um, But ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? And to tie that in with Stephen Covey's book, he says, imagine your death three years from now and who's talking at your funeral. What do you want people to say about you? What kind of contribution to their life have you made? And what do you want to be known for? And again, that question for me, it took, once I asked that question, it still took about three weeks and a lot of, uh, I don't know if heartache's the right word, but headache, definitely just like, what what is it you know but that's what you know that's one of the reasons why i wanted to talk about knowing your why because once you do know you can use it as a filter for almost everything that you do as you're as you're growing your podcast starting your podcast you can use your why as a filter for guests as a filter for episodes does this particular episode fulfill the mission that i've set for myself going into the next six months or a year, or does this guest, if I have them on my show and we talk about their story and their journey, does that fit my why? And whether you have a hundred episodes or what are you on? Four forty. Four hundred and forty. Fragger. You started in April, right? <laughs> it's an hourly show. Hourly. <laughs> yeah. Four new podcasts of archives. <laughs> 
Yeah, just make sure you get all those in a new and noteworthy, right? <laughs> or 600, like some people we know. Uh, but you can use your, your why as, as this filter. But what also I've also found through discovering my why, and if you want to know, I can share that to you as well. But finding my it's also like a, an extra battery or an energy source or fuel on the fire that when you get tired you've been working all day or you know you've got to get something published for Monday morning and it's Sunday night, knowing your why, why you're doing it, the people who have given you feedback that your show or your blog has, I guess I should stop talking about the blog since this is podcast South Florida, but your show has has benefited them. That's when at 10 o'clock at night you say, they're going to want my stuff on Monday. Alex was just telling me 10 minutes ago that he met somebody When was it? They had started a business because of your blog or podcast or some advice that you had shared. You know, what if that guy had shown up on on wherever he consumes your stuff on Monday and it hadn't been there? You know, that's that's the interesting part about the why. It gives you that extra fuel and an extra bit of of energy when you need it. So the third thing that I wanted to, to share about that I have learned, and Jared mentioned this when he was humbly introducing himself i think jared is one of the ties that kind of binds everyone here to some degree but the third thing that i have learned and not necessarily done well and hope to do better is grow your network and i don't know if you you guys and gals i want to say y'all but that would scream (laughs) texas right (laughs) we we understand it (laughs) Can I say use guys? Or is that... No? Y'all? And even all y'all. All is... All's y'all. Whatever. Whatever. Florida's got a, a wide variety of people here. So, But I wish I'd learned a long time ago that you needed to grow your network. And I had the, the pleasure of being on Valerie Gross' podcast. She does Inspiration with Val. And I was on her show twice this week. And... A previous guest of hers by the name of Chris Cardone said, Strangers have everything that you want in life. Chris Cardone said it. Strangers have everything that you want in life. And you think about it, you know, if you wanted to grab a cup of coffee, the stranger has the coffee and you need it. Every single person in this room, many of you up until, I don't know, 45 minutes ago were a stranger. Mm -hmm. Every friend that you have in your life was a stranger at one point. I mean, Jared and I have known each other for about 15 months. I met Donald shortly after that. I met John. I knew John, sort of, through his blog before I met Jared. But we had never met until he walked in the door, but I recognized him. But strangers can become friends, and every friend that we have became or what started off as a stranger, and they, again, have everything that we want in life. And any time that you want to take your business or your podcast or your blog to the next level, it's all going to be through growing your network and meeting more people and making more connections. And it's not just about numbers, but it's about the the human-to-human connections. I mean, I didn't say, hey, classically trained.net. I knew John. I've talked to him on the phone. I know... I don't know where he works. I didn't stalk him, but I kind of know what he does. <laughs> I know, I know similar things about about Donald and several people in this room who I might have even just met tonight, like John Dennis, for example. I've listened to his podcast; got a lot of great tips from him. But it's just growing that network, and again, whatever you want to do, whatever next level it is that you want to take it to, it's all going to be because of growing the size of your network. Um. And again, that comes down to kind of the the same podcast mentality that hopefully all of us have seen, and it comes out of uh, abundance versus scarcity. And we can have more friends, we can have more connections, and just because I made friends with Laura over Twitter and talking about where to go eat doesn't mean I can't be friends with, with somebody else. The last thing that I wanted to share is that we have to go all in with what we do. And there are several people that are very synonymous with their brand. Like Donald said when he introduced us, I'm the sales evangelist. And, but 
in, he mentioned my, the, the word empower. I used to have a different brand than I do now, but the word empower is very much a part of my brand. What I want to try to help people with and, and, and do and give them wh however they define empowerment. But you have to go all in with whatever your brand is, whatever your message is, and whatever your podcast is. No one wants to partner with the guy who is half-assing it. If you're just kind of lukewarm and you're like, yeah, this is kind of cool. We'll see what happens next. Nobody wants to have that person on their show. No one wants to go and do a business deal with or possibly do a co-host or even just have them on their show as the guy that was kind of blah, that kind of didn't do anything. So whatever you're doing, go all in. Show up every day. And that takes me to my last piece. This isn't like a number five, but it's uh, ev the, one of the last questions that I ask everyone on my podcast. It's the final question. And if anybody wants the, the ebook, it's all at elleriewells.com slash awesome. But it's the final question. It's the title of my tiny short ebook, but it's the final question that I ask everybody that has on my show. And the question is, what is one tip or piece of advice that you can give people who are just starting out like me? And there's a wide variety of answers, uh, but I, I've kind of boiled them down to, to some of them. And, and they're not all different, but they very much overlap. But one is do one thing every day on a consistent basis. I don't remember who it was when I showed up earlier. They said I did something consistently, and I can't remember what I did or who said it. But that's one of the biggest things, and that's why the Sunday morning news is so popular, because it's every Sunday. You can, like clockwork, New York Times, Sunday morning news. That's why people expect that consistency, and you can should expect it with yourself. Do one thing every single day to help you get further. Make one new connection every single day, like we talked about growing the size of your network, and then... Figure out where you want to be in six months and really just work it, break it down into things that you can do every single day, every day. That's, that's the, the tie that brings all of these, these tips and pieces of advice together is something on a consistent and regular basis. It's a routine, and if you get into a routine, it'll help you get out of a rut. If you're in a rut, change your routine, but do something every single day to help you get where you want to go. And... You'll be at 3 million downloads in 400-something podcasts or 100 podcasts with some of the, the biggest names in the industry or you know maybe 60 days out from starting yours or wherever you are in your journey. But just do one thing, make one connection or something every single day that will help you get there. And that's all I got. Well, what Ellery failed to mention because he's so humble is that he just wrote a Kindle book, how to, how to <laughs> remind me how to how to start your professional how, yeah, how to start your professional podcast for two hundred dollars or less. It was a number one Amazon bestseller in three categories. So. Also, is going to be on a panel speaking at Podcast Movements. One more big shout out and thank you to Jared Easley and Laura Sanchez. I really appreciate them helping me out, getting me introduced, and really inviting me to be part of the podcast so, podcast South Florida community. And it means a lot uh, for me to come from out of state and to be welcomed with open arms. And again, I want to thank you guys. Before I go, I want to mention that my online training course, How to Turn Your Offline Expertise into an Online Business, is opening up again. We're going to kick off the very second class. The first one, awesome success, getting a lot of great feedback from that. The second one is starting on August the 19th. So if you're hearing this live before August 19th, 2014, you can go to empoweredpodcast.com slash expertise. That's empoweredpodcast.com slash expertise. Check out my landing page on that. I want to help you take your, your knowledge, what you already know, what you have spent years accumulating your expertise in, and I want to help you turn that into an online business. Because what, 
What I have found is that so many people are tired of the concrete and steel job that they're going to. They're tired of the commute. They're tired of working for some jerk who doesn't care about them and for a company that doesn't have their best interest at heart. And they want to do something cool with what they know. They want to share a message with the world. They want to help people. They want to make a difference instead of just going in going in and punching a clock every single day. If that is you, if you're listening to this and that sounds like you, go to empoweredpodcast.com slash expertise. Again, the class opens up. We start August the 19th. That's two days after podcast movement. But registration and enrollment is open now, empoweredpodcast.com slash expertise. I want to see you in that course. I want you to enroll. I want you to take the very first step for taking back control of your life and gaining back your freedom by taking this first step. And I want you to do that right now. Thanks for listening to this episode. One more final shout out and thanks to everyone at Podcast South Florida and for my mom helping me able to helping me be able to go to Miami and for my sister hanging out uh, with me for a week while we while we toured uh, the humidity there of of Miami and Palm Beach and all that stuff. We'll see you in the next episode.